you're in Geneva. Um, I believe you're in Geneva right now. Um, and so it's about, what is it, a little after four o'clock on your side? That's it. Yeah. Cool. cool. So uh, this uh, exhibition is launching on behalf of uh, the Newark Arts Festival. And, uh, you know, I've been a resident of Newark for about eight years now. Um, and uh, I created a body of work there really to lay the foundation for my broadcasting company, the Hadley Broadcasting Company. And, um, uh, you know, I've had this idea to start a company, uh, particularly a broadcasting company, since I was seven years old. And um, I noticed living in Brooklyn, uh, in like actually a really bad part of Brooklyn in East Flatbush behind the Vanderveer projects, um, uh, that we didn't really own any of the uh, media infrastructure that was in my neighborhood that was influencing folks. Um, I'm writing about it now in uh, a book that I'm writing about the whole experience from then until now, and just about like kind of like finding your way creatively through life. And um, uh, I think it was like June 19th, 1989, I was seven years old. And uh, I went to go see uh, Tim Burton's Batman with mm -hmm. Michael Keaton, right? And it was a phenomenon. Uh, there were guys up and down Flappish Avenue where like selling t-shirts, every tchotchke that you can imagine. You know, this is when stuff is kind of high quality. So, you know, you had like leather medallions with the mm -hmm. Batman logo on it and people were repping this, this, uh, you know, it's like nothing compared to like how the Marvel universe kind of saturates the market. now was because the culture like attached to it in a totally different way. And, um, you know, like I said, I lived in this cul-de-sac behind the projects. So, um, you know, the, the vibe was just kind of like, uh, just, how can I put it? Like, just grimy in a way, you know? Um, and that day and up to the point where it seemed like everybody on earth went to go see this movie in, um, the crowd was silent when the let out of the movie theater was silent. It was like, well, it was joyous. You know, nobody was beefing with one another. It was, there was no conflict. It was just like the movie had transported everyone out of the hood, out of the ghetto and into this other place. And so I came out of the movie theater and I was waiting for a cab across the street with my mom and my brother. And uh, I noticed a huge billboard over this old uh, kind of Zigfield Theater, uh, the Kenmore Movie Theater. And it was a Nike billboard. I couldn't afford Nikes growing up, right? <laughs> so, you know, I noticed as well in the Batman movie that there wasn't anybody that really looked like me in it. I wasn't taken back from that, right? But subconsciously I was like, I clicked over into this mode where I realized that there was another layer to life going on. Um, that uh, it was like an influence. Mm -hmm. but what really clicked is, you know, it was towards the end of the school year. And I think it was the week after, um, you know, everybody was in class talking about the movie, the teacher was talking about it. And, um, in walks the best dressed kid in class and he doesn't have any sneakers on. So the same Nikes that were being advertised, right? He was wearing them and somebody stole them off his feet on the way to school. Oh. Right. So I, I, I realized that like everything just started becoming very cinematic to me. And, um, you know, to fast forward a bit, well, just a little bit, I, I made a decision at that point that I wanted to uh, be a director. And it wasn't really, you know, um, a decision. It was, it was more like, I think around like seven years of age, 
we all like kind of click over from like, you know, child to being a little bit more mature or have a different sense of self. And I started to see different. I started to see more like a camera. I started to see people in the street as characters. I started to like, you know, my, I just like my eyes hit puberty in a way. It was very interesting. (laughs) And um, so fast forward to um, a life from that point until I guess like first year of college, um, very difficult, filled with a lot of problems in the home, um, a lot of moving around, a lot of physical abuse, things like that. And um, I say that to put that in the context of my people who have been through a tremendous amount of trauma. And when you don't have agency in your neighborhoods, and your neighborhoods are not aesthetically pleasing, uh, it's almost another traumatic experience. Yeah. So, um, thank God for encouraging people like Amy and, um, and Jay, who are on listening right now, the people who um, helped me get screenings in the past. Um, Amy, I've, I've met her working for Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, I think it was 18 or 19. And I was 18. And I remember once Amy looked over my shoulder for something I was writing and she was like, you know, she was like, wow, Ben, that's something that like you read in like, a, a, like a great book or something like that. Like one of these famous writers, right? And I'm like a, you know, 18 year old kid from Flatbush who, um, you know, the archetype for not supposed to be doing anything, you know? Um, and here I was, you know, listening to the creator and just being guided into this uh, position, right? So fast forward to about eight, you know, a little bit, let, let, let's, let's backpedal and so let's not hit the work yet. And, um, you know, working for Francis, going through 9-11, um, that office closing down, uh, having my own company, having several companies, you know, creating music videos, commercials, writing commercials, writing music videos, um, doing work all around the world, having work shown at, at, at Khan and, 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 and just being exposed to uh, what it was like to be an independent. And I've never lost that spirit of wanting to um, create, not just for my people. I don't necessarily mean just black and brown folks. I mean people that are, you know, because I have layers, right? So the people that are hurting, the creative people, the people yeah. that want to be themselves, the, you know, the list goes on. Uh, the good people, you know. Um, I think and, maybe people with a vision rather than color or religion or, or yeah. well, we've spoken about this before, but I think um, all this thing about being inclusive or diversified or whatever. It's more about, as you say, creativity, vision, and being able to express it in a popular way, quote unquote, that matches with everybody who, yeah. wants, who wants to listen. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's like speaking the real language, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that language has a lot of bandwidth. And, you know, I always go back to like how people are drawing in the caves. You know, so art is like a huge part of our self-expression. And um, it's like we were speaking about the other day. It's like, if if you view things like a party, you know, in the party setting, in the dance floor atmosphere, there is no color, you know, if you can dance, you know, (laughs) and uh, everybody's just there to have a good time. And And it's essentially very productive, you know? So I always say that back in Flatbush, we always used to, Friday night hit, sometimes not Friday. And we used to say, okay, we're looking for a vibe. So mm-hmm. the vibe on earth now is very homogenized and whatnot. And um, in part, that's one of the reasons why I started the broadcasting company to uh, create a vibe. I saw the, the opportunity to create a vibe where it was totally vibeless, right? So in Newark where, um, we lived and we were stationed and we made our films and we made our, the art that I'm about to show here. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're talking uh, commercial district with residential smatterings, um, blight, uh, just dysfunction, 
And, um, but opportunity for an artist, mm -hmm. right? Opportunity and not just for the artist that, uh, you know, is just gonna pick up a paintbrush and whatever, you know, an artist like a, that's willing to pick up a broom like I did and clean the space and shoot it as performance art and, um, and put myself in a position to, um, to feel and become one of the people there, right? Um, because like I always tell people, like I could go to Los Angeles and make some money shooting nonsense. And um, I think not only is the calling in the places that we're creating the work, um, because you know the work is really about helping people, but the <laughs> the bag is in these places, right? The opportunity, the financial opportunity, are in these places, right? And not in a succubus sort of way, in a very powerful, meaningful, um, building equity with the people, helping the people, you know, uh, because you know paths converge, you know. Um, one day the rich guy might get robbed, you know, by the poor guy, you know, <laughs> but if there's no poor guys, then maybe that will change, right? And so long-term strategy is like to develop work that uh, can solve these problems. Yeah, I think there'll always be, sorry, I'm playing devil's advocate, but there'll always be power struggles anyway. But what I see great in this project is that you're giving people a canvas to express themselves on, which is yeah. which they can possess, which they can take a hold of because yeah. it's there, it's theirs and it's in their hood and yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. A lot of people, when I was cleaning these, um, let, let's go and take a look at it now actually. Okay, I'll just share the screen, just a sec. Yeah, do you want me to share the screen? And I'll, okay. I'll do it and I'll, and I'll All right. Okay. You go ahead. Wait, I think I can multiple. There you go. You should be able to share now. Okay. So. Okay, I got you. Okay, we good. We good now. You guys see what I'm working with? Yes. Okay, great. So this is a project that I call Banquet. Um. Banquet is a about five to let's say eight thousand square foot space on West Market uh, in Newark, and this space initially uh, was a I believe a chemicals based building that sat in on this street for many years, uh, it became defunct. The front wall caved in and created all the, all these bricks are from that front wall. And um, it was left there for over a decade and it's still there. So what I did was when I first moved into the neighborhood, I thought about Ai Weiwei and his project with the um, sunflower seeds mm -hmm. that was at the Tate, um, right? So to, uh, if, if, if anybody's listening that doesn't, that's not familiar with it, the, um, in, in China, um, where Ai Weiwei is from, he went and uh, he hired a group of local like workers really they weren't even really artists they were just like um, individuals that knew how to work with their hands and um he had them make about uh, i think it's a million clay uh sunflower seeds which has a tremendous significance in their culture um, because that's how they fed themselves in you know dire straits and so um I, I wanted to do something like that with, uh, with the bricks, right? And uh, so what I did was, you know, I scanned this space so that when people could get a sense and a scope of what this was looking like, right? But initially what I did before I, um, I, I cleaned this space up here, right? By myself um, as performance art. 
I think it's important to mention what you said yesterday to me is that this space had been left for 20 years or more in, in this state. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is a disgrace, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have small children and I would walk down the block and I felt bad for the fact that the kids had to walk by something like this. And I didn't feel it with my kids first. I saw other kids walking there and I didn't like that. And I, I thought it was my responsibility as an artist and a person that knows how to work with their hands to get a broom, get a shovel, get some clippers and go to work. And as a filmmaker, I shot it so that way I could tell the story because I believe in like, you know, mining and minting your own narrative um, because the stories are here. And um, if we, like we were speaking about yesterday, if you, if, if you look at things as you're breathing moment to moment, you're, you're able to see story unfolding. Um, and it's not just for consumption on TikTok, you know, it's for like using it as a tool so that way you can change things like this. So I, 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 I blessed the space first, right? Um, and with, with these sprawlings here, right? And this, if, if you look at it closely, uh, somebody tagged over it, which is totally cool because it sat there for about a year, you know, um, but it says like, you can see it says like Benedict yeah. right here, right? And it says like this and different things like that. So it basically says like Benedict blessed, right? Throughout the whole thing. You see like God there, right? The fact that someone actually tagged over it is, it is totally cool. And, um, but it's funny because I also work with, with urban culture in, in, uh, in Switzerland and there's a sort of un, unspoken rule that you don't tag over somebody else's work. Yeah, it's called buffing. You're not supposed to like buff somebody's yeah. work, right? So uh, if it was not cool, I would have definitely painted over it, you know? But <laughs> because somebody... Um, somebody buffed the work on the other side of the wall. And I was there, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, they did it 10 o'clock, it was down, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause it was just nonsense or whatever, you know, but um, I liked the fact that I activated this space because there were a few tags on this other side here. Um, I'll show you in a moment. Right. So none of this was here, right? Uh, these, okay. Yeah, these yellow markings, this is me. So this is an original, I think maybe this writing here was there. Yes, that was there, right? So, you know, Jersey has amazing worldwide uh, graph artists and nobody was hitting this wall mm. and you know here comes nerdy old me with my you know paintbrush or whatever and my my clippers and you know i really enjoyed uh the performance of it you know i really enjoyed that part of it that was the, the, the fear of doing it initially of going out and painting these bricks and um and, and uh and I'll show that to you uh, in a few, but of painting these bricks, because I was, you know, it was a lot. I would walk by it every day and be like, mm. and it was and weighing. How, just, just to envision it, how, what's the time span? How long did it take you to get to that state? And also, do you have to do it, um, quote unquote, inofficially or illegally? Or is it okay? The way of Newark, Newark is like, Bushwick back in the day where you can pretty much from a creative standpoint, get away with anything. Okay. And, um, and I knew that. And so uh, no one bothered me. And, you know, there were guys, they, there's people that live behind this thing. So I got cool with the homeless guy that was back there and he watched <laughs> the stuff when I would leave it for a few minutes and go grab something to drink or whatnot. Um, it took me about, no lie, when I moved there, so it, it might have been like a good five years of me like figuring it out how I was going to do it, 
because I already had the vision. God gave me the vision to sell the bricks. I was like, I'm going to sell the bricks and buy the building. I would tell the family that and they'd be like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> right? And, you know, thank God for queen. She didn't like, uh, say I was out of my mind. That's my face, you know, <laughs> but, but it was, uh, you know, it, it was interesting how I earned the respect of the community, particularly that block, right? Because the men on the block, they would see me taking care of the family and doing whatnot, right? But um, when I came out here to do this, it was, they moved different, you know? Um, and, you know, this, this, this wall here, for instance, um, I'm gonna take us to the other side of it here. Right. I love the way it moves. It's like you're in a time, time machine and boom, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. in the next lot. I'm, I'm going to share this with everyone as part of the exhibition. And the best part is when you put on the VR glasses and you take a look at this, right? Um, and it's exciting what I'm about to explain, right? So um, this is our home, right? And uh, we lived on the top floor here, right? And we would project off the wall here. Mm. onto this wall right so this wall here was this color initially when we painted this it you know if you're familiar with cameras right it the 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 f stops of how much light the neighborhood received after that yeah dramatic right to the point where the vibe changed a little bit because of there was more light hitting yeah. the block, right? It's, you know, I definitely think about art as science and it was really interesting to, uh, for, for, you know, to see that happening. You know, it's, it, I think like it's interesting when you are, when you think polymathically like I do, you know, you're moving from filmmaker to writer, to business, to this, to that. And you kind of forget that you know certain things and, I didn't consider the fact that this wall was going to brighten up the neighborhood in this way. Right. Sure. Yeah. And it was really great. You know, we projected on this wall and you couldn't see me up here in the cut, you know, again, going back to Batman, I really felt heroic up there late at night where, and I would watch people, you know, walking by and just stop. Yeah. But well, you would, it's, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's so fascinating. Right. And, you know, I met some really tough guys that they were staring at this thing and they were mesmerized. You know, you, these guys are non approachable, right? But art was able to stop them in their tracks and give them a sense of agency in their neighborhood. And I think that's something that is very important. The cutting edge, um, non-European art in, mm -hmm. in neighborhoods like this, right? Because people see me, they weren't thinking I was gentrifying their neighborhood, right? So not, not really, right? Um, but by being part of the community, by cleaning it up, by raising my kids there, um, they got to see that, you know, and I'm, I'm by patroning the stores, by, you know, it, it, the next door across the street right here, um, this place here, right? It, mm -hmm. You know, they do gangbusters business, the soup factory. If anybody's ever in Newark, check them out, check Ali out. Um, but Ali, they would tag up the side of his place and I, without him asking, um, I would just paint it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, because that's what neighbors do, right? And not only that's what neighbors do, but it's great performance art, right? For all the kids that are watching, for, um, you know, uh, for, for, for all the people that don't know what it's like to have community and, and what, what the role is. Yeah, you were raising awareness. And how do you plan now to, to, to bring this forward? Like, we're, we're, how does this continue? How does your story continue? 
So um, I, but, but again, going back to the broadcasting company, right? So the main reason why I needed to clean this lot in addition to raising the community up was that uh, we've been working on activating this lot here, which is city owned um, into an AR experience, right? Where people from not just the community, but all over the world um, can buy goods here once it's activated with AR, right? So some of that work are the blocks that I have on Wise Key, excuse me, on Wise Art, right? And um, those are almost like shares. Um, uh, they're, they're really like memories, but they're uh, actually just like, um, like an investment into the company, investment into the story verse that's um, uh, had the broadcasting, right? So this is really about like telling um, a, a tangible narrative. And this, what you're looking at is, is like ancillary uh, cinematic content, right? So it's like um, in the book that we're writing about this experience, it's uh, about, um, you know, the, the whole process and, and, and the precursor to this process, right? And um, there's a follow-up that we're writing as well that uh, is called Boost. And it's about the young girl that, is, that plays our daughter in the film, what happens to her when she grows up, when this becomes very successful in the story, right? And in real life, of course, in the story, she, um, what happens when this family blows up and she's in the spotlight, right? But she has all of this information inside of her. So what I wanted to do was create a story verse that had its origins in a real place with real people and, um, that could that the community could have equity in, um, and, and so we did that. This is one part of it, and uh, I'm going to go to the um, metaverse portion now. Okay, so yeah. just give me. Why you do that? Maybe for those who don't know what Wise Dot Art is or Wise Key, that's the company that I work for. Um, I'm the art director of Wise Dot Art, and it's an NFT platform, which um, I'm from the art world, uh, and so which is basically an. A, a, yeah, a shop front for, for artists who, who have a good story to tell. And obviously Benedict is, is one of our artists and we're very proud to have him. Thank you, I'm very proud to be a part of the family. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking as we were in our apartment, um, and let me go to that first actually. Um, Right, so this is our apartment, right? This is where we lived for eight years. And uh, the scrawlings everywhere were spiritually guided messages that I received in the space. And, and what we did was we totally blessed the space so that way it could be energized, right? Because what I was thinking is, um, you know, I would walk by these individuals, my community uh, in the neighborhood, and I'm thinking, what is going on in their lives? When they're in these spaces, what are they thinking? What are they dreaming about? And so I wanted to show that. I wanted to show that visceral reaction of what I was feeling on the walls, in the space, taking agency uh, in, in these spaces that were actually designed, not so much this space, but the neighborhood designed to not uplift, right? And so I wanted to, um, I wanted collectors, I wanted the audience to know what, to, 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 to see what these characters, how they were living, right? Um, again, laying the foundation for a, a, a large story verse, um, you know, you never get to see where any of these characters that are, you know, all over television, you never get to really see where they live, right? You never get to walk around their space, right? And so I was like, what, what, what would that be like? And um, 
So we created this space. These, um, these murals and this artwork is available as wallpaper with my partner, Bijou. And um, they do millions of square footage all over the world, um, worth of like commercial space and as well as residential. And, um, and again, that relationship is based off of uh, the concept that if Disney can do it, and um, you know why do I why do we have to have Disney bed sheets? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. um, the people need something like that, and um, so we created this based off of that. Right? Uh, let's go into this room here. So a large part of this work is about premonitions, right? Being very in touch spiritually, a lot of the things that um, I painted on these walls ended up coming to pass. Uh, and again, being thinking uh, polymathically, like outside the box, however you want to say it, um, we don't know everything about what it is to be a human being, right? And um, oftentimes, especially in, 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 in financial markets and whatnot, um, they pull the spirituality out of, uh, out of practice, right? And um, I think that's gonna be the most important part of our process as human beings moving forward, accepting the fact that we have a spirit and accepting the fact that our spirit is part of our process. And we need to listen to our spirit. We're receiving information. And um, that information is, is key to our health and success, not just as individuals, but as a people and as a planet. And so um, <clears throat> this piece in this body of work is really about that. Uh, about receiving those premonitions and about um, creating uh, what you're instructed to create. You know? And do you think that your family got the same message or were you communicating what your spirituality was was coming out as? Um, oh. You know, there's different, there's collages, there's a portrait there, there's a chessboard. It is, do you think that the family got the message? That, were they impregnated with your message? I believe so, yeah, because my youngest son, you know, we, the, this kind of, the impetus for this started when we um, couldn't find a gallery space. I went down to one of these blue chip galleries in Chelsea and, uh, you know, I had a connection there. I met with the director and uh, it was really, it didn't feel good, you know? They didn't get my work, they were weird not in a good way and then i get in the elevator and there's some collectors in the elevator and they're gushing over the work mm -hmm. after i just had just gotten crapped all over by these blue chip folk and i was like hmm. i didn't like that feeling and well you didn't fit in a box at least no i didn't in box. you know I, I i didn't and and you know you're speaking to somebody who David Hammond stopped on the street and was like, I love your work, you know? And, you know, been in his home and sat with the greats. So mm -hmm. it's like, God is giving me some information that I have to take, you know, uh, to heart. And um, so I think that the family, but so as I was telling you about my youngest son and before this came to pass, you know, I was looking for the gallery space, couldn't find the gallery space. I was like, you know what? We're going to make the gallery in the house. And family's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> People are coming in the house. I don't get it. Da, 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 da. I was like, I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go along, but this is what's happening. Right. And um, when I, so I painted enough and then I started to hang the pieces that we were, uh, that I was painting and creating. And um, my son was like, oh, dad, you were right. Like immediately he felt that he saw it as a gallery, right? And, you know, we've had collectors come through and best believe I cleaned out that place 
And like you wouldn't believe, it went from apartment to gallery in a day. Well, <laughs> not a day, maybe like three days. You know, um, we have big closets. So <laughs> those beds got taken apart and shoved in closets and stuff got moved to the basement. And again, I'm saying this about the narrative, right? Because all of this is going into a book. The film is about 80% shot already because um, we documented this whole process. And, um, it, you know, it's like developing new economies, right? Working with Wise, Wise is an internet of things company, a cybersecurity company, right? Um, new economies need to get developed, right? And I believe that this is how you do it, right? You look in front of you and you see, okay, I'm, I may not be using this right now. Who can use this, right? Um, uh, or, or, you know, a large part of the climate uh, issues that we're having is the construction industry. There's a ton of pollution coming out of that industry. If those things could be transmuted, if this wall could be transmuted from drywall that's going to end up in a trash heap to a piece of art. Into the Web3 be... and the blockchain and the NFT. That's what I'm saying. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm. You know, there's, there's economies here that we're not seeing. And well, not not everybody is seen, but they're they're there. And um, well, it's know, coming very fast, I think, to the general public as well. So um, it's good to be ready, and it's good that you've got that vision. I think. Um, I don't know if at this stage, Amy, or I don't know what your name is, Molf. I'm sorry, but if you guys want to come in and talk, you're you know, please feel free to do so and give your your insights if you think there's potential. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's been a while since we caught up. I love to see how, just, just speaking outside of what I'm looking at, I love to see people on their journey. And, you know, I'm, um, my team, we built the connections with a lot of people around the world. We're kind of like secret agents. We don't really like to be known, but we're known. And, you know, the, the blessing in that, like, like the, the secret economy of that is seeing so many different types of creatives, artists, entrepreneurs, scientists, thinkers, tinkerers evolve. And so listen to your story. Um, and, and, and your story dives into mine, you know, because when we met, we, we, you know, we met within the, the, the pompazette elitist kind of bourgeoisie, petit bourgeois worlds right those were the circles and the times we were going and so most of us did not interface and communicate on our history right and where we come from right we, we, we were all transacting on the facade right yeah. and here we are these years later you hit me up say hey i'm having the zoom you know take jump in you know i don't I haven't changed that nature of myself i'm curious what anyone's doing and to hear about your story about flatbush you know, my family migrated from Venezuela to East Flatbush. So I'm, my team, half my team is from East Flatbush. And there's something in the water in East Flatbush, you know, growing up on Wilmore <laughs> Street and Lenox Road and Church Avenue. And I'm remembering that Batman phenomenon. So I can confirm you your know. story about Batman and Tim Burton and everyone in Latin America the destruction, the creative destruction of that is curious because everyone in Latin America and the Caribbean were wearing those Batman t-shirts into the 2000s. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you would go to Puerto Rico, DR, or, or, or British Guyana, or Brazil, and Panama, and see that Batman logo on the white background or the black background everywhere. So I get, I'm just confirming your stories. It's, it's, very, it's very cathartic to hear someone taking parts of the story, recontextualizing, um, understanding that the Renaissance is, 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 is a polymathic Renaissance. There's no Renaissance without polymathematics and recognizing that specialization over specialization was a design to, 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 to support the 20th century innovation infrastructure that Carnegie and Rockefeller and those guys created and their educational system that was built to, to, to create that infrastructure. And here we are at the end of that cycle. In this new cycle, you know, we didn't recognize that the 21st century would take 22 years to really show up. 
<laughs> kind of felt it should, you know, it kind of felt like, oh shit, we are in the 21st century. And like, and like um you you both were saying about this web three phenomenon, which is really just a recontextualizing of zeros and ones, right? It's just giving space to new to new ways of looking at the world. And the fact that you're saying that that it's here and now it it creates an ecosystem and economy for polymathematics. It allows other ideas to get in the casino, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And the conventional blue chip world that is working very, very hard to work against entropy and chaos and creative destruction to create, you know, these boxes that so that one can mitigate risk and reward and, you know, create these ecosystems of, of consistent forecasting, you know, like we want to create these projects that are typically multidimensional because they mitigate risk. The economies we can calculate and project based upon past experience, right? A lot of hindsight bias, a lot of bias in using the past to predict the future because truly we are creating it for the first time. Um, I really Those like the way are, that you say you went, you know, we're evolving and we're leaving one cycle to go into the next. And that's exactly what you, what you just said. It's, it's not the end, it's the next page. And, and it's, it's an aura. It's great. I think it's, um, it, it opens that new gate or portal or whatever you want to call it, but we're at the edge of it. And that's, what's so exciting. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, I absolutely, you know, I, I, someone, I was saying something to some of my, some of my clients in the fashion world when I would leave names out of it. And I would say, you know what, what we should stop doing is projecting this Judeo-Christian apocalypse yeah. and start, and start imagining a Renaissance. Yeah. And if we, it's just, and that's really just a branding issue, right? It's, it's looking past the 2000 years of, of that thought of Western thought of Western a certain type of thought. And this is, this is, this is free of judgment. This is, this is not getting into the socioeconomic politics of, of different groups of people. But the reality is that technology and the same way how you said, um, you were looking at as, as art, as science, you know, because everything is everything, right? It's all mm -hmm. from the one, from the source and looking at culture as technology, which is our thesis. This is what we lead as a consulting company. We say culture beats strategy. We're scientists, we're economists, we're finance people, we're business people, but we pay attention to culture. And seeing that we can recontextualize the world from a place where it's not an apocalypse, the world's not over, the world actually has an opportunity to, to re, re, to, to, to have a rebirth and that's gonna come from the polymaths and whatever terms we use to feel comfortable about that kind of dissonance of someone being multi-subjected, someone having multiple disciplines and people's ideas that are kind of like a Frankenstein monster mm -hmm. of different kinds of people to create the new. It's gonna be sloppy, but it's gonna be like graffiti. It's gonna be like hip hop. It's gonna be like dance hall. It's gonna be like jazz. It's gonna be like rock and roll. It's gonna be like the art world. It's going to be like all these things and it's just exciting to see it. So I just want to really just lend my, my optimism and my energy to what I just saw. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I, this is very inspiring and I'm happy to hear another person and a group of people who are, to, who are recontextualizing value because there's all these hidden economies that I'm excited about. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on, not on the Titanic, you know, I will be, <laughs> I will be on the other side of that conversation because this is the opportunity. So I would say I, I feel less apocalyptic and more, re, you know, rebirth, you know, mm -hmm. reborn and recharged when I see works like this. So thank you again for, for inviting me, man. I appreciate, oh, okay. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really brilliant. Everything you said, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's very inspiring. So thanks. Benedict, do you want to go on? To move on to yeah, the I, I mean I I wanna I wanna I'm gonna move on to the digital, well to the metaverse portion of it. Um because I think that the importance of of it, even though it uh, like Jay was saying, that it, it, it's transforming, um, you know, and it's an ongoing thing. And I think that is one of the most exciting parts of, of everything that's that that's not only going on in the world, but going on in my work is that um it's it's evolving and not in some like uh, you know standard way of saying that, but it's part of the practice. 
that um, it, it's, it's, it's allowed to, like, again, the narrative is there, the story is there, people evolve. Um, and that's, a, that's an important part of learning. So, uh, and, and teaching as well. So why not put that in the work as like a huge part of the conversation? So part of um, this process was to show, you know, um, what, I, what, what, I, what I kind of didn't have access to show, right? I didn't have the blue chip gallery, you know, I had the, had the walls in the apartment, but the digital um, really helped to uh, speak about that. Right, and really speak about what was going on in my mind. And so, um, so what we have here is possibilities, right? So, um, uh, the possibilities, what can I say? You know, um, that, that's of all that I've been through in the past few months, the, the possibilities are ripe. You know, I was on the phone yesterday and uh, I think last week, Jay had posted something about like hedge funds and mm -hmm. I had a great conversation last night and the possibilities, you know, um, and, and really, you know, I'm going to back a little bit like this work is for the young kids that I was teaching in Newark that were part of my film who one of them got shot dead in the street at 17 years old, right? And this guy used to knock on my door, Khalif, and be like, oh, Mr. Benedict, when are we gonna make the movie? When are we gonna make the movie, you know? And I know what it's like to be like in, you know, from the hood and not let people in. So to earn people's trust and to earn his family's trust, that's an honor. And for him to show up and walk the Brooklyn Bridge, and he cried that day because he was like, he never, he, he did his afraid of heights. This is a tough kid, nice, sweet kid. But he was like, he's afraid of heights, this, that, and the other. So just to, for the creator to give that experience to me, right? Um, how could I repay that? You know, how could I, how could I get the devil from taking Khalif out of this world, right? Um, and so this, this work is about that, right? And I think the, you know, the agency that, the work provides these kids because the kids have equity in the film. Um, this is just one portion of the exhibition. It's going to be rolling out over the next three days as part of the festival. Um, and there's additional floors to this gallery in Metaverse. Um, but, uh, you know, I really wanted a space for these kids to uh, be able to, to like learn and grow. And so I think that's like really important as an artist to make sure that um, you are, you know, using the blockchain, let's say, um, to be able to give a portion right back um, to causes, you know, to a very particular cause. And, you know, so it's solving a problem. So tell me a little bit about the festival. So did, this website is now available. The link is available on your website. And then... Yeah, it's available. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go on. Yeah, I was going to say that it's. I'm, I'm going to start sharing it now. Y'all are the first folks to uh, to experience it, and um, you know, I, I guess through years of marketing, you know, I've learned not to just like spew it all out at once. Uh, you Sorry, know, I'm pushing, pressing you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Not you. I didn't mean that for you. I want to see meant, more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't mean that for you at all. I just meant like. Um, you know, it's like dancing, you know, it's like, it's like anything, you know what I mean? I, I realized that my skills as a filmmaker, I could use them and just like give a little bit and, 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 and see what it was doing and uh, make it my own. Right. And uh, definitely down for the evolution of it. Right. We had a conversation yesterday about certain colors and things like that. And um, those adjustments were made for the better. And, um, you know, I'm down for the evolution. I'm down for, you know, I, the, the, the Christians say we're one body in Christ, you know, and it's like, we're, we're one, we're one organism when we're, when we're clicking, you know? So I appreciate the feedback yesterday. So we start off here, right? Um, this beautiful space, somebody's in here with me. Is that you, Sixteen? <laughs> And uh, 
I'm gonna I would like to say that we should have that young man that you're talking about, the 17 year old boy who's moved on to another journey. He should be in homage. He should be one of the avatars in there. You know, it's so interesting. You're absolutely right. One of the floors for the gallery is called the Caliph Harrington Gallery. And it's just dedicated to, it's not for the exhibition, it's part of the exhibition, yes, but it's gonna be something that is gonna I'm gonna have until, you know, I pass on Hadley Broadcasting Company to my son and he runs it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, or my daughter, you know? But it's, it's about um, a space for, you know, you say these words like a space for healing or whatever, but, you know, if Khalif was in another neighborhood, um, he'd be here, you know? Mm. The, he, he, he got shot leaving school at nine o'clock. And who, why is he leaving school at nine o'clock? You know, why, why, um, why is the school dilapidated all around, you know, the whole vicinity? It looks like a bomb hit, you know, why? You know, and that has to do with, um, you know, societal issues. And um, so you're absolutely right. Like he deserves to, you know, he, he, he's part of me. And so he needs to be a part of everything that we do. That's the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, it, it is. I mean, you feel really good. <laughs> I'm very much a Brooklyn Bridge. Um, but this is supremacy. This is a piece that I made in 2013. And um, uh, it's really about when I, I was working for Oppenheimer at the time, working with Oppenheimer at the time. And uh, I was starting an art program there uh, called Corporate Bonds. And um, I, I took the job because it was right across the street from the old East India trading company and they used to sell slaves there and I was like oh I'm about to get back right now and in Oppenheimer you know so I want to start some trouble and so I took the job and uh creatively I started doing things like playing Miles Davis in the lobby and wearing my my Jesus peace gold chain and wearing my Gucci shoes there and whatnot and just being very like boisterous and black and <laughs> and making them love it you know, and my father had worked there for 30 years. So he had uh, gave me the job. And so I had all this leverage and I had his name too. So people would come off the elevator and see Benedict Hadley and not see this old dude, see me. And they'd be like, well, where's Ben? I'm like, I'm Ben. And it would be like this mind fuck for five minutes, you know? And it was great, but it was all performance art, right? Because I could, I understood it from a perspective that they didn't. And, um, and I realized how strong the creativity was at that point. It was really a turning point for me where I stopped doing these like asinine music videos for people that didn't appreciate it. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start doing what I see in my head. And um, which is art shows on the street, you know, hacking, hacking blocks in the middle of the night, like doing reconnaissance for a block that I felt like needed more creative traffic and um, planning out exhibitions in the middle of the night. Well, well, you know, planning out exhibitions for months sometimes, just like how I did in Newark, right? It took me five mm -hmm. years to do that, to start the same thing, right? I call that like, I hacked that block, right? Change the dynamics of a block with creativity without anyone's permission, right? I don't, I'm, I'm not going to the city to get a permit. Um, you know, if I do, uh, not getting the insurance requirements and all of these things um, because as, as a performance piece, certain people cannot afford the insurance. So um, supremacy is a piece based off of that concept. And I realized that uh, I can have total dominion over this situation. And um, because the creator, from an energetic perspective, the creator dwarfs this man-made system. Mm -hmm. And so by being in contact with the creator, you're able to align yourself a certain way and be a conduit for all sorts of things. And um, this is a, this is an important piece to me. Um, I'm 
So just to let other people in the know, some of these works are already on, on wise.art um, as a potential NFT material. So to be you know, inscribed on the blockchain. Um, the way it works is we do la lazy minting. In other words, the piece gets minted only once it's bought. And so right now it's just like a digital gallery and it's it's got um, the catalog is there. So you just uh, search for Benedict Hadley and you'll see all those works in detail. Yes. And you can and zoom in and out and have a look. And um, both of you, if you can drop your emails in and um, when the catalog is up and as the exhibition continues to roll out, I'll just update everyone. Um, so this piece here, is, um, is untitled and it's really about the outer lens looking at us, right? Um, this is where the distortion comes from. And, um, you know, it, it, it's really like a, the non-distorted uh, self-portrait, right? Um, and I think that's a very, that's been a very important part of my journey. And I think I'm making this work because I see that other people are struggling with these things as well, right? Like uh, people are very much concerned with what, uh, with, with the lens that other people are looking at them at instead of the lens that they're looking at themselves through, you know? And uh, it's a lot of weight to carry if people are, are, are have this sort of mindset. And so I thought that was an important piece to just put in the front and to, um, you know, these, both these pieces here, this is a, you know, I, I've shown this to a few people and um, they think it's scary. You know, I actually like adore it because, uh, you know, this is a, this was shot with one camera and uh, by, you know, I've been using cameras since I was about four years old and I really understand them on a very, very deep level. So I'm able to do things with them that most people can't. And, um, you know, it, you know, I'm able to express myself, not through just composition, but through like tapping into the camera on a deeper level, you know, the electromagnetics of it and then creating based off of that. And I think that's a very important part of like evolution that I'm trying to, uh, you know, delve into in my work, right? That we are one with these systems, right? They're not separate from us. And, um, so, you know, in the exterior of feeling very strong, like I believe I appear in this image, right? Um, again, there's still the, 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 the power that comes with that distortion. You know, like the, the, the it, 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 it's a lot, you know, when you are very creative, when you're very talented, when you are in, in the push, you know, when you're pushing to be heard and seen um, and then to have the creator with you and to feel the, the magic of that, uh, it's very, you know, fascinating. You know, I'm, I'm wearing a Hamilton hat in this shot and I found that hat on the street in Philadelphia. And boy, oh boy, did so many people comment on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to get, I think, I was able to get seated at certain places because I was wearing this hat. And people were like, oh, did you like it? Did you see it? Da, 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 da. And I was like, no, I'm totally not interested in it. But I'm like, yeah, amazing. Just to see, <laughs> like, you know. How Play these... the game. I yeah. think also a picture tells a thousand words and that's what the strength is, is that there's the message is you don't need the words to explain it. I just went to a Banksy show in Germany yeah. And Banksy is the same. You just need to look at the work and the story plays. You, it, there's no need for explanation. No. And, um, no. Yeah. But you don't look scary there to me. You just look cold. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, I was cold. The roof, you know, I did a lot of work on that roof in Newark. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a blessing because uh, I had that outdoor space, you know. So, yeah, I was cold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so let's move on. Okay, so kind of moving in chronological order here, right? Um, 
this is a great piece. This is actually a physical piece on wood with yarn, pastels, different, um, okay, stop wolfing around here. She's having some trouble. Okay, there we go. Yes, okay, so I guess my avatar is dancing or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you can see, she it's really- It's easier like with the goggles. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this piece is, uh, somebody owns this piece, but I'm actually, the, 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 the digital version of it, I think is very powerful. It's had a great response. And um, this was when I first met uh, my wife and, 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 you know, I don't actually like that term, you know, it's like just my, my, my partner, my, my friend, you know, and the, uh, the energy that I was feeling around that time, right? It was again, uh, like a real alignment of uh, just a time of alignment, right? It's the time I started doing those block hacks in the street. You know, I directed my first play. You know, I, I met her as she auditioned for the play. Um, I was working at Oppenheimer. I was making these arches. I was like, just kicking ass in a major way. And uh, it was great because I wasn't giving my energy to anyone. You know, I wasn't, you know, no client was taking my energy. No, you know, I didn't have to deal with the misunderstandings of, oh, the work is this or that or whatever. You know, uh, I, I go by the moniker Kick Rocks Org. And um, it's, it, it's, it's really about like Kick Rocks means like, you know, go do something productive, screw off. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's about like, because, you know, there's just so much nonsense out there that, um, and so this, you know, there's a lot of energy in this piece and it, and it was, uh, it was based off of that, you know? And so I wanted to open up on this particular spot with this piece, you know, um, and, and what I, what I would like everyone to do is like walk through the, you know, th through these pieces and take a look at them themselves, you know, in all actuality, I would rather not explain each and every one, you know, I definitely would love to continue a conversation where, uh, where, where everyone's able to like, you know, have their own opinions about it, you know, and, and their own, you know, see what story they draw out of it. Um, it will be interesting on your website if people comment, and I think you should encourage that to, to open yeah. up a, a blog or something so that people can wait, either ask questions or, uh, or comment on the I exhibition. I love that idea. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so one thing I do want to speak about, right, is that before all of this came to place, we were speaking about premonitions, right? So this is a piece on paper that I did in 2011 or 12. Stop it. Um, and so um, this piece shows the, the, the figure here and um, the stock exchange here, right? And the block and this overhead non, this space with no roof, right? And this block, this block is very similar to the work that I did in Newark mm -hmm. before it took place. The stock exchange paper, right? All these, 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 these um, you know, these numbers and whatnot. Um, before Oppenheimer, right? Um, and again, what I believe is going on is that, you know, we're receiving information. Um, if you're tapped in creatively, maybe you're able to, you know, transcribe that information into art, into some sort of something that's tangible and not just in your head. So I thought that that was really interesting to, uh, you know, see how things, you know, came to play. I think that the more that we um, invest in things, the further we get away from our actual truth of who we are as a species, you know? And, um, and so I think it's important to make, you know, not just fine art and, and about it, but, you know, the stories have to be driven like that. You know, I think the stories that are going to change the world, the stories about um, people that understand that 
in a non-religious way that we have a creator, you know, we didn't just pop up here. Mm -hmm. And um, these are physical pieces as well. Um, so just a, a pragmatic question. Um, yes. Obviously in the, in the VR world, you can make them the size you want and uh, pick out, you know, you can frame them the way you wish. And when you say they're physical pieces, how are, are they? So one of them was on wood, but how big are they in average? Like, So this piece is about five and a half, um, almost by, uh, by five, this wooden piece here. Um, this is a triptych, so they connect together. It's called a cannon. Um, she likes it a lot still. Um, so each piece is about, <laughs> is about, uh, I would say like five and a half, you know, um, and if anybody's interested, I have the dimensions ready to go. Um, but uh, they're gorgeous pieces. I, you know, I showed them in Newark at the LGBT uh, center many years ago when I first moved there. And um, it's really about um, in this particular frame being connected to the universe um, these dots represent stars, they represent people, um, points of information. Um, you notice that the figure is in some sort of armor, right? It's about girding oneself. Um, this is the figure looking at the, the storm, right? Um, looking at uh, having the, the, the foresight to see trouble coming um, before uh, you know, and not needing the armor. Um, and then this piece is um, about the figure more in a state of like where I'm at right now um, of peace and, you know, serenity, all right? And um, they're, 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 they're on reclaimed wood, beautiful, um, you know, golden hues, uh, and they're just really interesting pieces, I think. You know, I, I made them at a particular time where, uh, you know, I was just like enjoying the process of painting. You know, uh, sometimes it can be, like I say, more of a job than a, um, you know, and I don't like getting in that zone. And so those pieces were made from a real perspective of, you know, I'm not thinking about a buyer, I'm not thinking about anything like that, right? I'm not thinking about like a mission. Um, I was just like being, and um, yeah. And, and so I really appreciate that. They hung in the house for, for a while and they gave us a lot of good energy. How big's the exhibition, Benedict? How many pieces did you choose to exhibit there? So in this particular gallery, um, there are about, I'm thinking a little under 40 um, pieces. And uh, throughout from now until the end of the festival, it's about 130 pieces. Okay. So you, would you say it's worth going back, like, you know, having a look, browsing at your leisure and then coming back, you're gonna change them or? Well, I'm gonna add another floor. There's two more floors um, in a gift shop that I'm adding. Um, I'm not going to stop at the uh, uh, at the end of the festival, I'm gonna um, continue to express myself and to hold these talks and connect with the community. Uh, this is a more comfortable setting for me um, than just like you know building community like randomly for some reason. You know, um, I'd rather be more purposeful with it. You know, but again, that's evolving as well. Um, and how is the film involved? What's your idea with that? You're going to include that in the movie? At a, yes, it's part a of the story theater. of your daughter? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So um, there is a movie theater that is um, part of the exhibition, and that's going to be showing Trap Cakes, the film that Khalif was in, and uh, a few other films that we created, and the trailer for the film that... Uh, I was discussing with you the film that takes place in Newark, Supreme Messages. Um, and um, so, you know, we're working to 
leverage everything that we're doing right now um, to secure financing um, for for Boost for the next project. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. That's and so how do people contact you? Uh, Benedict at benedicthadley.com. And uh, I'll put that inside of the chat. All right. We're sort of almost um, an hour now. So I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? The floor is yours. <laughs> did you want to say something? Did you want to finish off or did you have more things to say, Ben? No, I think we can wrap up and then um, I'm going to continue to, uh, to advertise and, uh, you know, just allow myself the freedom to express myself like daily throughout the festival. And uh, as the other galleries come up, um, I'm going to be inviting folks and I'm going to invite Amy, I'm going to invite Jay and, uh, you know, tell your friends. And um, yeah, I'm just really grateful that everybody took the time to come through and, and support and, uh, you know, just share their, their knowledge and their presence. And thank you, Sixty, for taking I think time. it's great. I think it was very in instructive and, and interesting. So thanks for that. We I've recorded the session, so I will... Uh, share it with you and then you can you can do whatever you want with it we're going to post it on our social media as well wise.art will has you know we're available everywhere basically and um maybe we'll do extracts or you know we can do bits and pieces of it but yeah. um i think it's been a good session i i um wish everybody a nice day or rest of the day yeah. um, again like if anybody thing. wants to take the floor they're more than welcome otherwise i'll close the meeting yeah i, think I, do have, I, have, I have so much so many questions you know so <laughs> I, I will just i try to um drop my email in the message but i don't see a message box here i don't know oh. if it's turned off i know it's a feature Hang and on. a function uh, boom i don't know where to look now share screen i don't need that yeah, it doesn't seem, it doesn't give me that opportunity that, anyway, you can write to us. I mean, um, uh, yeah, Benedict. I'll, 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 I'll write to Benedict and just yeah. want, just like, so like I'll reserve my questions for that because some of it is like functionally, how does the tech work and how does that integrate, you know, functionally, um, what chain is this on? And, and of course the VR, AR component, which is very impressive. And then plus, Benedict, what, you, what you're actually doing locally, in the jurisdiction, how you're fundraising, how is this going to scale? All, all these questions I have, because this is the nature of my work as a consultant is to build economic engines around um, around ideas and build and build in, uh, economic engines around creativity. So it's kind of my 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 form of art in the sense where I you know it's, it's thinking about the economics around this entire system and the cultural significance and impact of this system. So that's just the frame of my questions. But I'll reserve those questions and in, you know, in individual questions to you, Benedict. And um, again, I, I want to say thank you. It's been refreshing to uh, see this much progress, particularly within the art world. Um, being a consultant across 25 different industries and my connection to the art world, um, I always said to myself, the arts should be the tip of the spear in terms of innovation, creating memes and creating, creating new paradigms. And, and I'm happy to see that work is still being created. That's 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 honest and 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 yet innovative. So again, thank you for 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 the session. Um, it took me through my morning into my <laughs> next meeting. So I appreciate that being better than coffee. And uh, and Benedict, I'll, I'll I'll send you my email. You can, if you mind, just dropping um, Angelie's contact because I I really like this session. And also where the project is, just some of those finer details. And yeah. everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing this project. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. I'll reach out to you. You will have a good day. Okay. Amy, thank you. 16, thank you. My thank pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Your hair looks great, by the way. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Made an effort. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Bye.